Hello everyone! Uh, welcome back to the second part of the video of how to make my very how to make my very first zine or design, however you want to call it. And in this video, I'll be going over how I do my inking over the sketches. You'll see my process of me adding texture. Uh, mostly, it's going to be um, doing black and white inks. And the third part of the video, uh, I'll be doing more color and getting it ready for like final printing. So that'll be really exciting. And also in this video, I'll be talking a little bit about zine culture and how it started and how it's proliferated through different cultures and ethnicities and how it's still a really widely used um, media form and that it's very accessible. There's different price points for zines that are, I feel like should be explained and acknowledged. They don't, they're not all like high-end art books. They could be a dollar you just hand to your friends. So kind of exploring the right, the wide gamut or gamut gamut gambit <laughs> of the different zines all over the world and kind of talk about the history and significance of those so just do this thing and enjoy the journey of me talking about zines and inking so let's get it y'all
All right, so let's talk about the history of zine culture. So really, first off, zine history, it was seen as a counterculture and zines were kind of small and DIY centered as they are today. They were small, they were in circulation and they were self-published and usually really affordable or even in some cases free, like you would just hand them out to your friends. Zines are much about community or much about the community as, as it is about the product. The first zine was traced back as far as 1930s by the Science Correspondence Club in Chicago. It was called The Comet and started the long trend of sci-fi zines. So some zines have even gone on to win awards like the Hugo who, who. <laughs> So some zines have gone on to win awards when like the Hugo Awards for best fanzine and these awards still go on today. Um, to, to be clear, right? Fanzines and zines are kind of used interchangeably. So fanzines are usually circled around like existing IP, either like um, like a fandom, like in current day, right? And even some fanzines that is still used today and a lot of open calls for zines, uh, if you look even on Twitter. So it's really cool to see that still prevalent in our modern day um, language uh, that hasn't changed. So the love of zines and sci-fi got more intense, especially in the 1960s uh, when, you know, first Star Trek fan team came about called Spock, Spockanalia. It was created and it gained a lot of traction. Of course, you have new members getting in um, and really showing their appreciation for it. You even had some of the cast members writing letters and sending that in. So that was really interesting as well. And in the 70s, you know, things, technology got a lot faster. Now we kind of have more copy machines, so you can more so be able to mass produce scenes and for cheaper. So that was a big um, boom for scenes as well. Fast forward to the 80s, scenes got more popular in the pop culture, in the punk sense, um, more, moreover. So think of London, LA, New York. A uh, really big boon of just like, you know, stick it to the man <laughs> and having their own punk aesthetic kind of now being explored within zine culture as well. Some rock stars are even introduced in some of these zines. Um, zines found a really good resurgence in like um, feminism movements as well. So again, you have some Riot Girl, uh, and this was the Riot Girl was in response to the male dominated kind of punk scene that was happening and they wanted to encourage women to like take their own voice and make their own media. So zines was another form that they were able to do this. And even for today, you could see many of the lasting effects of that. So zines allow other people's voices to be heard, not just just punk or just sci-fi. It is expanded into many different realms. It, it's sometimes used to explore themes of feminism, culture, community, um, knowledge that have that are not really available or readily available or seen in traditional publication, which I feel is very important when you're looking at non-traditional forms like of media, you know, that people are used to or used to seeing. There are no gatekeepers um, within zine culture and anyone can make a zine with whatever material material is available to them so you don't need a publisher you don't need a publication to like green light your ideas you can just make them and i feel like that's the most liberating part of art in the zine culture and why it's still going on so strong because people just you know feel like they want to make something and they want to create it and they should be allowed to do so and not have anybody tell them that their idea is not worthy of being seen by others. So that is very important. And I'm very happy that zines are here and here to stay and have been going on for such a long time. <laughs> uh, so where do you find these zines? So there are like zine libraries, right? It's become its own history and worth preserving. Um, and a lot of people even have their own little zine libraries like right in their house. And then there's one, a zine library in Denver, Colorado. Um, there is one just specifically just dedicated. Some colleges even have their own repository of zines that they look back and forth and preserve as well. So yeah, public libraries, colleges, and even artists are creating spaces so others can find zines and be exposed to its vast world and like the history that might not be seen otherwise in a little tiny booklet, right, that was given to like their friends. Zine culture really is about fostering that community and finding 
we're creating something a body of work that doesn't have to fit into specific as a doesn't have to fit into a specific way it doesn't have to be for mass media to consume it doesn't have to be for everyone it can be for your very small niche of friends and that's okay <laughs> it's all right it doesn't matter because the, the magic that happens in the conversations between you know what you've created is what's important e either you're preserving a moment in time or you're fangirling about like hannibal <laughs> it's okay and and that zine is for that those group of people in that community and if someone else finds it and finds it really fascinating then hey they're along for the ride but i highly encourage you if you really want to know or see any more zines or if you're interested even like cooking or like botany there's like botany zines and stuff that are just people made this out of fun and because they really are passionate about something they want to talk about and just share so i would highly recommend you finding a zine that you really care about and just throwing some money somewhere at someone's etsy or going to when pandemic is over going to like a zine convention or a small comics run you know convention and just seeing if there's any local zines around and have a conversation with the artists and why they make it and you know what is their experience with making a zine as well so yeah just a little history for you And to preface, I was looking online to so some of uh, the website. The first source I kind of got most of the information from is on mentalfloss.com. It gave you a brief history of zines. Um, I'll also link, I'll also show some information of the zine libraries you can probably look up or go to if you're in the New York or any major city area. I'll put a little bit of information also in the description below so you can see and kind of browse through. And if you have any more questions or if you're like, I know really cool zine place, please feel free to like put it down in the in the comment section below so other people can find it. And yeah, back to our regular scheduled programming. Don't tear it. More carrots. Where's Garrett?
But thank you so much, y'all, for tuning in and listening to the little brief of zine history. And I hope you enjoyed a little glimpse into what makes zines and how they came to be.